my background yet, so you're going to have to deal with the crown behind me, which we can discuss <laughs> later. Never, um, never have a problem with Biggie. <laughs> I, I, I figured as much. Um, but, you know, I just quickly to introduce myself, um, I oversee general operations for the Sporting News, which is a longstanding sports media publisher going back 135 years in the U.S. Uh, and now operating in many global markets. We have a long history covering college sports as uh, the Sporting News is one of the five official All-American uh, award designees. Uh, but as Chris just alluded, this is brand innovators, this is influential, and we're talking about how name, image, and likeness is changing the game for brands. Uh, so with that, I'm joined by three very interesting marketeers, three whose products that I can honestly say I've used or consumed. So that's a good start to it. Basically, you can go work out, you can smell fantastic when you leave, and you can be protected with insurance uh, on your way home. Um, so just as an intro, uh, and you can use a sort of first intro question to sort of tell about what you do and, and how you have uh, considered NIL. And Ed, I will start with you. Is name, image, and likeness something that you, your team, had all prepared for? Had you been following it? And were you ready when it sort of dropped? Uh, so what's your perspective there? Not at all, as an answer, <laughs> you know, to be honest with you. I mean, I've been following it my for a long time in my career, as I worked with Nike and with New Era. And you know, they're, they're all about influencers, they're all about the sports space overall. But, you know, uh, we've just been started engaging with sports teams, with colleges, signing deals with schools. So um, that's, that's kind of where we are in the space right now. Uh, so NIL, obviously, it didn't come out of nowhere, but it was something that has been in the space for a long time. And um, so we, we weren't prepared for this at all on our end. So. And then, Nick, I'll go to you next. Uh, is it something that you guys have been thinking about or uh, sort of with the acceleration that it dropped, did it? Uh, how, how was you guys preparation going into it? Oh yeah. We've been planning for this for at least a couple of years now. So no, um, we, <laughs> don't start with the lie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, we haven't. Um, we, uh, we work with, of course we've, we've known about it. We've got a bunch of athletes on the team, um, on our, on our own, uh, on our own team, but we, we, you know, we were kind of following it along and, uh, we definitely had some discussions. Ambassadorship is a huge part of this brand and the way that we market. Um, and so when the time came that, uh, this, this ruling was passed down, um, we, you know, we work with influential and they kind of let us know that, you know, things are going to rapidly change and the kind of the gateways were open and, offered us an opportunity to just start working against it with an initial campaign. Luckily, it fit in really well with our promotional and our, um, our organic calendar. And um, we, were, we were lucky enough to be able to put, put, uh, put the foot on the pedal. And Jim? Uh, yeah, I would say we were, we were educated on it, informed, uh, but you know, not prepared once it, once it hit, given the time, timeline. But you know, really our, our strategy probably was to be an early adopter, not a, you know, you know, to be out in, in front of it uh, and more of a fast follower. So it, it, we're looking at it, trying to figure out how it fits in our talent strategy moving forward. Got it. So it's come up. It's now obviously, you know, you, you, you see every single tweet uh, or sort of sports media post talking about it. Um, uh, as you look into this new space and it's coming quickly, what are some of the immediate challenges that you see from a brand perspective, right? We just heard from the previous panel, their perspective on influencing the influencers or working with the, that creative in the other direction, but from a brand, uh, what's the sort of current limitations for you guys? I mean, I think the biggest thing for me and why, you know, I'm in a wait and see mode with it is their kids. At the end of the day, right? You're talking about 18 year olds, 19 year olds, you know, that already are under a microscope being athletes and as high profile as they are. But then you layer in on top of that social media, owning those channels, being connected to large brands and having money. 
you know, there's a lot involved in that. You know, there's a lot, lot to navigate through that. And just like I can imagine how I was at 18 or how I could have been having money and being <laughs> famous, I would have been a hot mess. So it just, it, they're kids. And I think we need to all keep that in mind as we're moving into the space and our responsibility to partner with them and to do it the right way. Uh, we, we need to be very uh, cautious of that. I, I agree with you, Edward. I, I think one of one of the immediate things that came to mind for us was schedules. Um, we work with content creators all the time, and they like they you know they've done this before, and they're able to they know how long things take, and there's a somewhat predictable nature of here's the here's where the brief comes, here's where we're going to review content, here's where we're going to need this next. These are athletes who have never done this before. Sure, they're used to a very regimented schedule as an as a student athlete, but when it comes to having this entire new thing come into play, um, it's a balancing act for them to be able to integrate it within their schedules. And we've we've felt that effect, um, and it, it's really no one's fault. It's just all of us trying to figure out how we work together and form and reform. I'd say another uh, challenge that is going to be really interesting to tackle is just the idea of content creation in general. These are athletes a lot of times when they're posting on their social feeds, it's professional photography or them doing something really cool on the field. It's not necessarily them like dealing with a brief from a brand and trying to think of interesting natural ways to integrate it within their lifestyle. So I think we're at the really early stages and as there's a huge opportunity for education in terms of brands working with athletes and kind of holding their hands and empowering them to be able to be creative and think outside of the traditional boxes in which they've they've worked on content before yeah and just echoing you know 18 year olds you know aligning that to you know a fortune 100 brand you know 100 year old company you know, that's, that's concerning. And, and just how we go about these partnerships and you know, who's representing these players, you know, are they going to fulfill the contractual commitments and some of the other things that you, you put out in front of them. So it's, it is the wild west out there and, you know, just trying to, you know, as much structure that can be brought, you know, in the next you know number of months, it's going to change a lot. And I think get easier for brands like us to participate in that, but you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of work to be done. Jim. So dovetailing off that, I think about I think about this through the prism of brand safety, right? You talked about being a top 100 brand, uh, you know, nationwide, something that's established versus you know, vis-a-vis -vis, say Planet Fitness, where uh, you could be using athletes to drive foot traffic in, right? I work out here, that that sort of nature and that sort of juxtaposition of possibly local versus national brand. How does you know? How does I'm I'm imagining that you're going to have to be a bit more uh, you know, uh, scrutinous over who you may join up with, with that sort of national profile and even the, the idea of insurance, right. Or, and, and what that brand stands for. Yeah, I think it's, it's always, we've had a pretty good recipe of, you know, tier one sports sponsorships with tier one media and then talent spokespersons that we, we bring in to, to get the message out. And I think you got to have that starts with the core alignment to the brand. You got to have that authentic connection with the talent that can deliver your products and services. And, you know, the reality is, you know, 18 year olds aren't thinking about insurance and financial <laughs> services and, you know, as much as you want to do there. So I think it's, it's just, it's finding <laughs> the right, yeah, not yet. I mean, the, real quickly with, you know, Quinn Ewers getting, you know, a million four yesterday. I mean, there, there's, there's all kinds of opportunities to help there. So, but that's, you gotta, you gotta just balance all those uh, elements as we're looking at what the right, you know, local versus national. And I think, you know, that leans into some of the exciting opportunities here. You can test and learn um, you know, with talent and working with some of these guys in, in a real targeted area against a targeted audience um, because of the flexibility. So I think there, there are definitely some positives out of it as well. For sure. And you talked about test and learn. Um, Ed, Nick, it, it, are you looking, how are you looking to sort of dip your toe in this? Are they going to be, you know, without necessarily giving away your marketing campaigns, but uh are they one-off one-off type campaigns to sort of get a feel for what this looks like um is it sort of the, the, the splash maybe because personal editorial editorializing here i think some brands are just getting the lift off of being associated with nil right now right they're getting as much value of being in the uh you know the 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 tweet or the reporting on the fact that a deal was signed more so than even the activation right 
So what do you think early on, given this is sort of uh, come down like an avalanche, uh, that, yeah. that approach is going to be? I, I yeah, think, I, I, I oh, think it's ahead. really about working with the experts that know how to do it, right? And how, like, like influential and how, you know, the key learnings they've had early on in this process and how they've perfected it along the way, you know, that's going to be the key for, for a brand, you know, brands to get involved and engage with the, with these kids. There's some brands, you know, it really depends, right? There's some brands that disrupt their brands, right? They're all about jumping both feet in and, and getting involved in, in things like this from the get go. And their core consumers are the 18 to 24 year olds, right? Yeah. So it seems very authentic you know, for them to do this. And uh, it makes sense for them to jump right in. But most brands, I think they really need to step back a little bit, you know, learn, you know, work with great partners who know how to, how to uh, uh, work with influencers, like influential, and, and do it the right way. It, it's very important, I think, um, uh, for brands. But now it's a time to test. You're going to test it. Yeah. I, I think in terms of our initial, there was a there was a point made on the call earlier uh, about um, buying power, and that just really resonated with me. I mean, even though we sell men's body, even though we sell sorry, even though we sell men's men's body wash, you know, it is it does represent an upgrade to your your um, to to the category, and you're not always um, though there's certainly values alignment with a given segment. Sometimes there there, ne there isn't necessarily the purchasing power or even the demand um, for for certain people. I remember when I was in college, I wanted to spend the money that I had on Chipotle, and when I was 21, I wanted to spend it on beer. I didn't necessarily wanted to spend it on things that were that were good for me, um, or I didn't want to necessarily spend it all on personal care. I think that's changing though. Um, our, you know, when what we decided to do with our initial campaign, we the the jewel of wanting to be first to something like this was really enticing. At the same time, um, I'm always a really big fan of doing a proof of concept and not necessarily going super big on something I don't quite understand, and I don't think anyone really understands this. So we we went into it with I would what with what I would say is a somewhat small dip just to prove out things like engagement and to prove out cost per acquisition, whether or not we were getting traffic to our site. Um, and I, I think we're still in this process, but in terms of what this could look like further on this, uh, Jim, you had mentioned this, it's about figuring out what our strategy is and how, um, really making sure that we're able to properly vet opportunities. Of course, we want to work with everyone, but we have to understand where that fits in within our general ambassador strategy. Got it. Uh, Nick, not to call you out, but your phone going off during a panel reminds me of the brand safety we have to consider with them. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I guess I didn't read the uh, email that you sent up early All enough. good. Um, so sort of combining one of the open questions um, from the Q&A um, with, with one I wanted to, to bring in, which is, you know, the question here was, what do you look for when finding athlete influencers to partner with demographics, location, school reach? Um, I, I would sort of uh, generalize that to say, or, or, or take that, what is that going into it, but how will you evaluate uh, in any of these partnerships coming out of it? Does it, are, does it fit an existing framework um, of your typical, uh, you know, marketing, uh, marketing mix, or is this something that will be assessed unto itself? And I'll sort of leave that open. I, I think it fits in our framework, I mean, you, you got to have, um, you know, a partner that's going to help you drive your objectives. And it just depends on what type of campaign you're working on. Uh, but it shouldn't, shouldn't change just because, you know, they're a little younger. I think the, the process of vetting, you know, the beyond just background checks, their, you know, social content yeah. uh, review and kind of what their interests and, you know, alignment to the company. So all, all that should, should still Fit that that similar format that we you know approach we take with any talent. Um, can they help us get to where we want to be? So I, I I view it very similar to what we've done. Just it opens up a new new audience and some new complexity with the schools involvement and you know competing uh, sponsorships and sponsors and others in that space. So, uh, but I, I think we'll take a similar approach. Got it. Anybody else there? 
Yeah, I think this falls within our um, within our wheelhouse, and it's just another type of a talent that we look at. Um, we we have, um, as I said before, ambassadorship is a really important part of this brand. It's part of the brand ethos, and it's part of our marketing strategy. Um, and really, it's more of a question of is it is it going broad? Is it going deep? And we haven't made those decisions yet. Um, so we're doing this initial campaign really just to test the water and get a baseline on performance and engagement metrics. And then from that, um, we'll, we'll have, um, we'll, we'll come together and really figure out what the investment looks like for 22. Yeah. And, and that point about it sort of fitting it, fitting in, you know, we're, we, we've opened this up. It, it's, we've always been able, or brands have always been able to engage with, say 18 to 22 year olds, they just haven't been college, college uh, athletes, right? So it's, it's actually, it's just this whole pool of people are now there. Now they obviously fit a, uh, a specific appeal and, and perhaps a greater appeal while the typical maybe 18 to 22 year olds would have been local stars or big celebrities, right? We have some sort of continuum in the middle. Um, and I think that part about Nick, you said breadth, whether it's going uh, wide or going deep. I think you see some of the arrangements, right? University of Miami, you know, you, you come here and you get a deal, right? Or Georgia Tech signing the entirety one, right? Or uh, walk-ons getting their scholarship paid for, which is that sort of cast wide and sort of a general association. Um, but on a, I think on an individual level, it feels like it is sort of a nuance on something that really should have already existed, right? It's just how do you engage with someone uh, in this sort of age bracket and what is their impact on our brain going to be? Is that the right way to think about that? Yeah, I mean, for us, uh, I think some of these, uh, I forget the person's name who, um, who did that Miami, made that big splash in Miami. Um, and I, I think about what Barstool did, you yeah. know, Barstool said, go ahead and post our name in, in your uh, profile and we'll give you a hundred bucks worth of swag at a hundred thousand, 130,000 people, uh, 130,000 athletes do that. There's a lot of, um, I think they did a great job of going wide. Um, but, you know, there's brands that have different levels of brand awareness and depending on that different brand awareness, they need to make calculated decisions on whether they have the budgets to support a go wide decision versus a go deep decision. Mm -hmm. For us, for us in particular, we're such a hyper local brand, right? right. You know, we're franchise driven. Uh, it's, it's really tap tapping into what, you know, we feel our franchisees feel our partners feel on a local level makes the most sense for us. You know, I don't see, uh, you know, us having a national partner who's, mm. who's a college kid, but I can see, you know, on a hyper local level, especially in college towns, right? We have right. clubs in Lafayette, Indiana, right? right? Where we could tap into a Purdue athlete and partner, you know? So uh, for us, it really, I mean, it really depends on the brand and, and what you're trying to achieve. So, yeah, and that's a, that was a, uh, a nice anticipation there. And I was going to say, because of the sort of franchise model of a planet fitness, yeah. you know, the localized efforts in a smaller college town is, uh, you know, likely going to be different than what Jim would do from a, uh, a, a national perspective, a national level. Exactly. Right. Um, and even at, I, obviously there, there's activations that can happen on local levels that for, sort of cross all these different brands. Um, to that point on activations, another, another question from the sort of Q and a, um, what, what are the pie in the sky opportunities from a brand perspective? Are there any ideal partnerships? I know this is tip probably hard to, to, to say, but is there, is there maybe uh, sort of post, um, you know, looking back at a partnership as to what you would want it to drive? Does anybody have any ideas about like what that, what that success and early success may look like uh, for either your brands or maybe a marketing brand in general? Success for our organization would be achieving that baseline. Um, we have budgets set aside for the amplification of, of our brand. We have budgets that are set aside for direct response. And so in trying to understand uh, these athletes and in trying to understand the, their followership, 
Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what influence means within this within a brand partnership. We know what their influence means as an athlete, but what does their endorsement amongst a young Gen Z audience actually mean when it comes to uh, making that purchase decision? So that that would be success for us is achieving that baseline understanding. Um, and I think depending on how that baseline goes, there's a number of different ways that we could pursue it. I, I would say though that like in my gut, I feel that there's such an opportunity to work with athletes to better empower them and in terms of understanding their brand in a multifaceted sense, not just as an athlete, but really their worth in a number of different dimensions and, and being able to properly assess all the different opportunities that come their way, the types of content that they can create. Um, I think that they're the closer that we can get to athletes and not blanket with like big, broad opportunities. I think it's going to be better for us as a brand. Yeah. It's, it's all about tapping into these communities that these athletes are creating for themselves as part of their brand and doing it, uh, with authentic authenticity. You know, I'm, I'm blessed to work in an industry like ours, which is about wellness and inspiring people to work out and be, you know, their better selves, you know? So the pie in the sky for me is how can these athletes, the schools, you know, all together inspire people to be fit, you know, to work out, to better themselves, you know, that's, that's the pie in the sky always. And that's what we're always trying to achieve. So I, I think, you know, it's not just about buying things. It's about inspiring, you know, kids at this level, you know, 18 to 22 year old and what they're going through, you know, so um, uh, that that would be the pie in the sky, you know, so. Yeah, I, I just I would use an example. So what we do with the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award and working with a yeah. lot of players and influencers that they get it. They, they see that it's good for both of us to work together to elevate the platform to talk about you know, the good things that they're doing in their community. And, and it just, it makes a, a, a really well-rounded investment. So to try to teach these kids that, you know, see a little further out in front and how we can work together to, you know, help you help us and, you know, help your school, I think. And that, that'll be the interesting, you know, evolution of this is, is these kids get more um, developed and, um, you know, and the ability to, to kind of have a win-win across yeah. the board. Yes, it's not just about selling things here, you know, I mean, what's what brands like ours are doing, it's about making the communities we're within better, you know, and can these kids be, uh, be uh, uh, voices for that, and uh, no matter what field or industry that we're in, you know, it's not just about selling things right now with to kids, but it's, we want to inspire them in a whole different way. Yeah. So, I think Ed, Edward and um, Jim, you both made um, great points here, and I agree with you. I think one of the immediate things that we see with some of these early deals is that there's a fear of becoming known as the, the brand that worked with the athlete soon. Like, and, and, and so your brand is getting muddied with just kind of dollar signs, and it just looks like, hey, you're, this is just a monet, this is just a transaction. People are getting paid. And so the idea of emphasizing something larger that's more community focused, that's more uh, about empowerment is going to be really, really important. Um, not only just for, not only just to do good as a brand, but also just thinking about the optics of it that are kind of dominating in this very early stage. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to the extent that you guys have had this conversation or that you're understanding how these conversations are, are formalizing, what, what models are you using to have those engagements? Is it direct to player? Is it agent? Is it school as agent? What is sort of the entry point to having these conversations other than saying influential um, uh, to, to sort of have these conversations in mass or is that sort of the wild, wild west as it starts right now? I think it's the wild, wild west right now, <laughs> but, you know, we have great partners at the universities we work with right now. For instance, Northwestern, uh, where, you know, we're constantly talking to them about how can we evolve our partnerships? Is it directly with the athletes? Is it, is it with the school in, in a certain way? I mean, 
we're having those conversations with our existing partners in the universities, uh, uh, but it's the wild, wild west right now, I mean, to be honest. So uh, we're, we're leaning on, like I said, people that know have been in space. That's, that, that I think is an important thing to do. Yeah, I think, I mean, it, it's all of the above and you can tell, you know, the, the, those that are further along in the process, the bigger schools that are gonna figure it out sooner will help on all levels to recruit the, the athletes to get their, their folks, you know, more, more dollars coming in and make it easier on brands and their partners to, to activate. So, but it's, yeah, it's, it is the wild, wild west right now. And, you know, there's all those different points of entry, which makes it really challenging as a brand marketer. And uh, going back to Nick, what you said about being sort of the, you know, being wary of being a too early mover, maybe uh, having a, you know, whatever comes with that sort of association based on how it goes, remaining positive. Has, is there any particular deal that any of you have seen that you, you liked for whatever reason, or <laughs> even on the emotional side, I keep coming back to the, the walk-on ones, which I enjoyed, we've probably watched a couple of times. Um, but is there is there any particular deal from a maybe from a brand perspective that has resonated or too early to tell? Yeah, I mean, I I I, I just mentioned the Barstool one. I yeah. thought that that was really I thought that that was really interesting, kind of a kind of a flex. But that's Barstool for you, <laughs> of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't really noticed any um, any individual kind of like uh, brand to player partnerships or activations that I that I haven't I haven't really taken note of one yet so probably in the too early to tell camp yeah okay. I, I'm the same it's too early that's why I, when I say wait and see it's not wait and see that I don't see great potential in this and great opportunity I, I just want to see you know how it's done how it's done well how it's not done well <laughs> and, and how does it make sense you know for us to partner that way you know, and how do we fit in, you know? So it's, for me, I'm too early to tell. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, there have been a couple examples that more just structurally how this is all playing playing out that is just pretty fascinating for me. The uh, the approach that, you know, Alabama has gone with their quarterback and, you know, what, what he's done there. And then here locally in Columbus with Quinn Ewers and, you know, totally you know, leaving high school early and, and now making close to $2 million and just, uh, the last panel was talking a little bit about the you know, the divide and you know what it's going to create in the locker room, you know, amongst the players, and so it's just it's a really interesting you know dynamic um, you know that, that the schools and are are going to be dealing with, and then you know how brands kind of you know build off of that. Mm -hmm. And then on top of all that, as Nick was saying, they're students; they have to be, they have to go to school. You know, yeah. it's, it's 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 a lot of complexities. Yeah. And this touches on sort of all those previous comments, but I was just going to say, just teasing out those further gray areas, yeah. are, are there any other ones that sort of come up in those conversations? You know, obviously these students or these athletes are students first. Yeah, that's me. I don't, I don't, work, I don't work for the NCAA, but, you know, there's, they should be students first. They have, you know, and as athletes, though, they have rigorous schedules, right, where you know, the, the, a college athlete schedule is is intense, right? Um, so, you know, uh, beyond the partnership with certain athletes, the social media, are there any other just like, I, I talked about brand safety, but it's just gray areas that, you know, just continually would come up, I guess, and, and it may have come up again in dealing with 17 to 23 year olds in general? Uh. <laughs> I, I was I was cracking up because I was my my coach used to tell uh, our team when we crossed over a bridge and went to the field that we were athletes. And then when we went over the bridge, we were students. Right. I was just thinking, is there a third bridge for when you become a, when you have to worry about your brand or when you have to become a creator? Um, it's just weird. There's a lot of things to there's definitely a lot of things for them to uh, to manage for their their schedules. But I, I the gray area for me is just access. Um, like I said, if you're working with um, an agency that understands how to work with content creators, it can be a fairly white glove service. Yeah. The, what you have to do as a brand is vet the authenticity. And if you're working with a really great agency like Influential, they understand your brand so well that typically it's, it, it can be a very streamlined process. 
when the further that you're separated from these athletes that are so new and uh, to, to this uh, to this idea with NIL, um, I, I think that the struggle is making sure that you are creating a, a connection and you're creating a relationship um, that can be enduring. And it's not necessarily just a one off, see you later, but that this is something that's actually going to build and we're going to work together as a true partnership. Yeah, right. Yep. I, I, I... Like I said before, it's about the responsibility that we have, right? Partnering with kids and Nick hit it on the head is, you know, it's not just a push model where you're just, you know, pushing inf pushing information out there. They're not just talking about your brand. It's also a collaborative pull model where we have a responsibility to help these kids along the way, you know, to help them navigate working with a brand like, like ours and and how when they're out there and they're professional athletes they're going to be better partners you know they're going to be ones bringing creative ideas to brands they're going to be thinking about partnership in a whole different way so i mean the gray area is you know it's 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 time it's it's a learning opportunity for us and for them you know and we're and we need to help them along in this process if that makes sense yep and then uh, I was going to say, Nick, on one side, you're an athlete. On one side, you're a student. The entire time, you're representing your name yeah. and your likeness. That, that's, that's how it would go now. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Um, you know, uh, so has this sort of in your own organizations, has it uh, created new budget conversations, changed you know, change strategies or anything like that? And then sort of as a secondary question for it, a little, a, a little different, but I think it, you know, sort of relates to people who may be watching this. It's like, is there an expertise that's going to come with understanding name, image, and likeness, right? Is it something that even for people thinking about being marketers or marketeers, like, you know, uh, just as a personal quip, I happen to start my career uh, and going to one of the first 10 schools that was on Facebook. So in the first year working, I was an expert on social media, which really just meant I used it, right? <laughs> just, just timing, right? It just meant you were sort of, it, it just dovetailed. But as this, you know, for people who are being marketers or thinking about working in even those organizations, do you think that this will have its own sort of carve out organizationally and, you know, for individuals who, who want to be able to tackle it uh, in the most strategic way possible? I'll just say it's it's come up in conversations. You know, it's it's a story, right? So you know, leadership from all parts of our business are are asking what our opinion is, what our you know agency Wasserman, what you know what what information. And I, I what I what I've said is it, it talent is an important part. Just you know, like Nick Nicholas said on on influencers, and um, you know, we use talent in a lot of different ways. And I think it just widens the opportunities of who we can go, how diverse the group is different life stages, different, you know, geographic areas. And so I, I think it's it, it's going to fit within that strategy. I wouldn't say new dollars are coming out because of it. I think it just will allow us to activate a slightly different way in certain areas. Yeah, I see it being part of brands overarching influencer strategy, you know, and then you segment it uh, under, the, under, under that umbrella. But as that umbrella continues to grow, I do think they're going to be specialists within the influencer uh, uh, channel that that work with NIL that 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 specialize in this. So, but it'll be part of the overarching influencer strategy that brands have. I mean, I yeah, I agree with that totally. This is the first time that you have that brands have the access to a platform that's as scalable as it is. Ath professional athletes have been around for quite a while and this is the first this is really the first time that we have the opportunity to partner with so many um and so i do think it it does it, it for many organizations depending on size it will command um you know a, a couple maybe a, a few new positions to be able to accommodate it and think about it but it will be part of the overall influencer strategy so you're right so i think if we're if i gather that correctly from everybody you know, two, three years from now, or even a year from now, things move so quickly these days, right? Uh, we've hit sort of a stage of normalization, and this is just a part of the mix uh, that is in consideration of someone's influencer set or their activation set in that in that age category. Would yeah. I? Yeah. 
Yeah, especially given the need to um, the need to establish the partnership and the need to educate um, that maybe your your classic uh, influencer may not need. So I do think that it requires a level of resources to be able to maximize that partnership that um, that maybe we as marketers are not quite used to because we've never encountered it before. Got it. Um, so I think we're coming up on our last minute. I haven't got the uh, blinking lights warning, but I, I was I was trying to stay as on it. There's Chris popping up. Just any uh, you know general any any final thought? Anything I didn't ask that anybody wants to wants to get off their chest or uh, you know just a, any any leaving thought as we finish up our panel? My my biggest thing is like I said I. This is something I've thought about for a long time, especially with the past brands that I worked with is I'm happy for the kids. I mean, they, they are adults. They should own their image, their name, their likeness. I mean, and it's, it's a great opportunity for them to get a head start, you know, uh, in, in this game. And it's an opportunity for them to have a great pipeline to work with brands like ours. Now, now everybody's gonna be professional athletes, right? That we're partnering with and what great experience that they're going to gain from this but i'm i'm ecstatic and happy that they're that they're that they finally own that you know so that's my my biggest my biggest takeaway yeah i'm, I'm excited to um admittedly i wish it may have happened like 10 years ago that would have been great for me <laughs> but, um but <laughs> But I, I think that this redistribution of wealth is just really, it's fantastic. And I think, um, I, I just think as, as, as brand marketers, we're just in such an awesome position to be able to do good and to partner um, and to learn. And I, I think just, just the sheer number of athletes that we're talking about, I think the innovation and creativity that you're going to see is going to be pretty remarkable. So that, I think that's the the exciting thing to see on, on how, you know, we get through football season and the basketball season and other, you know, how athletes and brands and schools are taking advantage of it. Yeah. And just as my last point, I think Jim, I, I would dovetail off of that. I think because you have a group of, you, you have an age group that is typically creating trends and create and are tastemakers and this sort of, pull, you know, casting that wide to thousands and thousands of kids or young adults who will basically be empowered to figure out how to best influence uh, their circles, their, um, you know, their, their teammates, their towns will probably be very, would be very, very interesting. And in fact, marketers will often get some free work out of it, some free ideation out of it, because it'll naturally emanate out of, you know, what will become the thing, say, two or three years from now. So I think that's all very interesting. So I appreciate everybody's time. Thanks to uh, the folks um, at Brand Innovators and Influential for putting this on. Um, and I apologize for the background, though I do love it at the same time. So <laughs> we, lo we love it. We love it. John, <laughs> thanks for moderating too. Nice meeting yeah. everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris, too. Absolutely. Thanks. Amen, guys. Great, great presentation. Nick, we love working with you already. Ed, Jim, Sean, I think it's just a matter of time until we're doing some stuff together. Um, and again, we're gonna do more of these. So we'd love to have you guys all back. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks. All right, moving right along, we've got another very, very exciting panel. We have my dear friend, David Cantor, President of Football, Executive Vice President, GSE Worldwide, Russ Spielman, President of Sports Marketing at GSE Worldwide, Mike Raymond, Founder, Raymond Representation, and Amanda Kristovich, Reporter, Front Office Sports, who will be moderating the